comments. There we go. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Sugar and Crumbs. I'm running late, as you can see. <laughs> I'm here now. It's all worth waiting for, you know that. Um, so, my name is Tracy Mann from Tracy Mann Cakes, and this evening I'm going to be showing you how to make a novelty Christmas mug. So, I've already done a test run today, so I know it's working, uh, and that's what we're going to be doing this evening. So, uh, lots of chocolate work, a few moulds, a bit of painting. Anyway, I'm going to create, you know when you, um, you get a mug for Christmas and it's got patterns and things on it, well, we're going to kind of recreate that for you um, so that you can have a look at that so I'm not here alone I have Kelly with me say hello Kelly hello. so Kelly is in is she gonna come and say hello <laughs> she, you're getting less camera shy now Kelly aren't you so <laughs> anyway we don't also have the panic of the bake-off because normally I am racing through my demonstrations to get the, out for the bake-off so um, I will be able to stay a little bit longer tonight hopefully no my luck I'll probably finish quicker if I said that now so there you go um, but we will see how we go so it's going to be some chocolate work tonight as I say I've already done a version of this cake um, this morning or this afternoon so I know it works and I've got another version to show you when it's all over so you can have a comparison um, we're going to be using um, transfer sheets chocolate I've prepped my cake a little bit but I'll talk everybody through that um, and then we'll be able to go from there they're all saying hello to you Kelly I know <laughs> I've become the fan favourite yeah she's the fan favourite now you see I'm going to get you to do this live no <laughs> That would keep her going, wouldn't it? So, um, so yeah, we're going to be doing... Um, I've already done a Father Christmas version of this mug. Again, as I've said before, I will put all these pictures on my Instagram when I have finished, or tomorrow morning when I get round to it, as soon as possible. Um, so if you do want to have a look up close at all the things that I've done, then do go across to Instagram and have a look, um, and I will run through it all then. So this is uh, another version of something chocolate. We're going to wrap a big cake tonight, or a big-ish cake tonight, with the transfer to show you how to do that um, so that you can then make a, a mug a Christmas mug it's very nice actually um, I'm quite pleased with this one so <laughs> there we go so we're going to start with a little bit of um, we're going to cover our cake board so this particular project we're going to do in a pale blue color um, with white chocolate the other one I did earlier today was done with um, red I have to look at it now because it's over there forgot what it looks like uh, red and father Christmas theme so this one is blue and and snowman themed that's why I said I wanted that petal blue color Kelly she goes what color do I want for the snowman scarf I said petal blue <laughs> now I remember why <laughs> because I need to pay with it later on here she comes my helpful assistant thank you good girl right okay so um we're going to cover the cake board first let's get that done and dusted and out of the way then I'm going to talk through um, the transfer sheet and what we're going to do and hopefully this design will materialise before your eyes um, and we don't have to worry about the Bake Off which is rather good isn't it so there we go okay right let's move this out of the way so I don't need that in there either um, we're going to start it crash on the floor we're going to start by covering cake board something nice and straightforward so I'm going to just turn the screen so you can see so for this particular project if anyone wants to have a go at this um, this cake board is a nine inch round cake board Kelly can you just pass it no, I that need that water now that you've got next to you thank you and I'm going to be using where have I put it uh, Renshaw's Baby Blue. My camera's around the wrong way. Let's turn that round. That might make more sense, might it? There we go. And then we don't feel like we're watching it upside down the entire time. Right, okay. Paintbrush. Where's the other paintbrushes? The big one. Perfect. Thank you very much. So, first thing we're going to do, if we're going to do a cake board, because um, we want everything to match, let me just adjust this camera again so we've got it all in, there we go, is I'm just going to take some water and I'm just going to paint my uh, cape drum, like so. You can watch for as long as you need to go on, or no pressure then. <laughs> I won't tear through it then, Nikki, thank you. <laughs> All right, so we're just going to paint some water over this cake board so that it actually sticks the sugar paste to it. It's a little bit of sugar paste that we're using just to do this, nothing else. Um, it's the only bit of sugar paste in this whole project, but it's just really nice colour and it stands out. So there we go. So we're going to be using Renshaw. Let's bring this in. I need a pair of scissors to get into it. Okay, and we're going to take the 
this out. Like so, so this is 250 grams of Renshaw's. It is enough to do this project completely. So that's all the sugar paste that you're going to need. And all we're going to do is just give it a bit of a knead to get it going. <laughs> Marathon cake night might be actually. <laughs> <laughs> you never know with me. Let's stick some icing sugar down. Okay, let's just give it a bit of a knead to get going. Hopefully it's not shaking the camera too much because it is attached to the table. And we will start rolling this out. So there we go. So if you're rolling a circle out, just a quick tip, just quarter turn it so that you can um, try and achieve a round shape. That would be a good plan, wouldn't it? Just always quarter turn it. It's like turning 15 minutes on a clock. It's very cold in here, so everything's a bit, everything's drying really quickly in here today. Okay, round we go again. So keep it moving. Hello everyone, I'm just seeing some of your names <laughs> coming up. Who have we got coming in? Maureen, Lindsay, I can see your name. Nikki, I've seen yours. I'll keep looking up. <laughs> Keep talking to me. <laughs> okay, so let's see how we're getting on with this. Is there any scribers around anywhere? Can you have a look in that blue, no, the pink container behind you, Cal? So we're there, nearly there. Is this a scriber? That's a scriber. Excellent. That's excellent training. Okay, well done, good girl. I've got no clue. <laughs> you have got clue. Educated guess. <laughs> got a little air bubble there not that I don't think it's going to matter anyway because by the time I've put all this stuff all over it I think we won't see it anyway so there we go so we've got that to start with now before we put this onto our cake board I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, icing sugar on here we're just going to smooth it down just so it's really flat so before we put it on the cake board there we go we'll press it as hard as we like then Oh, Julie's on. Hi, Julie. <laughs> Julie's one of my students. Do you remember Julie? We did a cake decorating lesson in the dark in here. <laughs> right, let's bring this in. And then what we're going to do is we've got my rolling pin here. And I'm just going to put that over the top of my cake board. So I get this bit done first. Just smooth that down so there's no air bubbles in there. <laughs> Is Kelly getting used to our names now and where we live? <laughs> yes, I know exactly. <laughs> not much You're too gets familiar. <laughs> just not much gets past Kelly, does it, Kel? No. Okay. Right, so there we go. So that's that to start with. Right, plastic side scraper, where are you? Yeah. Oh, you got one. Marvellous. Oh. Can you pass me the other one? Thank you. Right, okay, so we're going to cut this now. So, for those of you that can go like this with my plastic side scraper. Now, my students who are on here will know this. Shannon asks, how does she spend her £20 voucher? She's, She's to decide what course you want, and then you need to email me. All right, so if you've got one of my online gift vouchers, that's anybody who's got an online gift voucher, then all you need to do is decide what you want to do and then basically just uh, drop me an email and I will sort that out for you, so no problem. Right, we've done the cake board, so that was nice and easy, wasn't it? That's the easy bit. <laughs> A little bit of blue left over because I'm going to need that later on for my blue and white themed cake tonight. So I'll put that over there. And let's have a look at the cake. So let's turn the camera. Let's get the other camera going. There we go. It's got a side view as well. It's getting very posh in here, isn't it? Right, so this is our cake this evening. Now, I've already prepped this. And there is a reason I prepped this. And that is because um, I need it to be completely stable in order to be able to do this. And if I'm doing buttercream and all these other bits and pieces and I've got it sliding around all over the place or I'm waiting a long period of time for it to dry, I could be here a long time. So what I've done this afternoon, so this is actually a five inch round cake. Let me just double check. 
or did I do a four? No, I did a four in the end. I think the other one was a five. This is a four inch round cake by four inches in height. Okay, for those in centimetres, that is uh, ten and a half centimetres by, well, ten and a half centimetres that way, four by four. Um, and what I've done is I've basically put my sponge cakes inside of there and I've coated it in white chocolate ganache. Okay, so I've got my flavoured buttercream inside. There's two layers there and there. And then I've coated it in the ganache. Okay, and I've let that set and you can see that is the structure that I've ended up with. All right, so what we need to do now, uh, which is best, buy fondant icing or make it yourself? Well, I always I like buy it. I mean, I haven't made it since 1985, <laughs> so I always buy it. Um, that's what I, um, I would do, but it's up to you. It's entirely up to you. Just because, okay, so Jamie says that she'd like to know what is in, she likes to know what's in her food, but she has arthritis in her hands and feels like it might have trouble with it. Again, I've not made it for a very long period of time. I'm sure there may well be other people that are live, um, that are on here that could advise you on that. Um, but I haven't made it for so long. If you've got arthritis in your hands and you, the sugar paste is a little bit tough, you can always put it in the microwave for sort of 10 seconds or so, and that always helps. That um, softens it up a little bit for you, so um, you can always do that, no problem. Right, okay, um, we are now going to measure, that's what we're gonna do next, this cake, which we've done, but we're gonna go circumference now. And we're going to cut, where are we? So all we're going to do is take the tape measure and we're going to cut a piece of transfer sheet. Now, if I show you the bottom there, my hand's in the way, let me move that out of the way. So for those in the inches, it comes to 14 inches or just under 14 inches at the point that it meets, but we're going to go at least half an inch over. So we're going to 14 and a half inches, which is about 37 centimetres. Remember that, Kelly? Can you remember? 37. Can you remember that? Yeah. 14 and a half, which is actually the entire length of a transfer sheet from what I remember, but I'll check that in a minute. And then height wise, now we've got the height of our cake, but what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna go up half an inch. So our cake's four inches in height, but we're actually gonna cut a piece that's four and a half inches in height. Cause, cause this is a mug. We want this to be um, a little, we want to have that rim so that we can then pipe and put some filling in the middle there. So that's why we're doing it like that. So it's four and a half, so a little bit, half an inch taller, or 2.5 centimetres, isn't it? No, a bit less than that, one and a half centimetres taller than your actual cake itself. So we are gonna be using one of these. Let's change cameras, where are we? Let's go to this one. So we're gonna be using the snowman transfer sheet tonight. So this is a transfer sheet, if you've not seen them before, um, they are all on my website, um, which is traceyscakes.co.uk. They are clear acetate sheets with a pattern on them that's been sprayed on, it's cocoa butter, and there are loads and loads of them, and um, I'm always coming up with ways to use them in, on different cakes. Uh, and this is my latest invention, so we'll see how this goes. Um, so they are clear up here in certain places, you can see my hand through them. So basically what you need to do is you'll need to put your, decide what chocolate that you want to go underneath this um, so that you can then make this stand out. So for example, if this was say snowflake, you would want to use something like um, milk chocolate or dark chocolate. Uh, white chocolate, um, milk or dark is fine with this one. We are going to use white. I think we decided in the end, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to do white in the end underneath this um, in order to be able to um, get this on. So let me show you what to do. So we're going to cut it first. So where are we? So let's see how long this is. Now, an actual transfer sheet, ironically, is 14 and a half inches. Would you believe it? That's very handy indeed. Now, I bought one of these years ago, which is honestly the best thing ever for cutting transfer sheets. I'm sure some of you may recognise one of these things. Now, around the edges of the transfer sheet, you have a plain edge, but sometimes it has wording written on it. You need to get rid of that because the chocolate will stick to that um, and then you're going to have a problem. So we're going to just pop that under there. People are just asking about your mystery boxes. We're having a good old chat about them. Oh, well, they, well, they were the Black Friday the ones. The Black Friday ones. We've run out. Oh, have you? Yeah, I think so. Okay. 
We we'll have to do wait till next next Black Friday or next People offer. Just asking how much they are. Oh right, no, we've run out now. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, we only had a few, um, but we've run out now. Right, there we go. Let's go on to here. Right. So bring that down like that. So we're just going to cut the edge off there. Now we can't cut the longer one off because that one actually um, doesn't fit inside my machine, which is very unhelpful. So what we'll do for this next bit, where's my ruler, there it is, we're going to measure the transfer sheet with my ruler, not my tape measure because then it won't move. Um, Kelly, is there a pencil in that pink box please? Now I also need to cut this bottom edge off as well because again, um, there should be a pencil yeah. in there. Okay, so I'm just going to cut that off there. Thank you. Like so. I see my scissors coming down. There we go. All right. Now, what we're going to do, I'm just going to move that sugar paste plaque out of the way because it is um, in my way. So we have got, let's have a look. Let's move that over there. What did I say? Four and a half, didn't I? Yeah. Tell me that, yeah four and a half inches so what we're going to do we're going to cut our sheet um, before so all we're going to do is just mark a little bit of pencil on there so just mark a few spots so that we know what we're doing I've probably gone off camera at the moment I'm still here I'll go back up here and up to this point there and then we're going to turn it around Take my ruler and join up the marks. Hold on, I'll come back on camera a bit. I'm off a little bit. Right, where are we? So one there, one there, one there. All right, I'll make sure I get this straight. I've still got to cut it yet, so the chances of it not being straight is very low. Um, <laughs> so if you want to do this in one go, a four inch round cake is perfect not having to join the transfers. You can join transfer sheets, okay? Um, all right, and we're just going to cut that along like so. And we're going to keep ourselves a little bit of snowman trance as well. So we've ended up with this bit here. There we go. All right, and that's the bit we're going to be using to wrap around our cake. So we're going to keep that bit to one side. And we're also going, we're going to try and do a biscuit as well. We're going to try and do a Christmas jumper biscuit. So we're going to keep this, where's the biscuits? Now, for those of you that don't know, it's Christmas jumper day on a week Friday. And um, I have come up with a way of being able to get the transfer sheets onto Christmas jumpers. So this is a Christmas jumper cookie that I made actually unusually <laughs> it's normally kelly but it's me um and i'm going to try and put some um pattern onto that as well so i'm going to show you how to do that as well as this at the same time now, i've not done one with white chocolate before so i've no idea how it's going to turn out but all i'm going to do is just take my transfer sheet and pop it over the cookie like that there we go and i'm just going to cut a little bit of a square like that don't have to be precise about this you can just cut it exactly like that it's very straightforward you don't need to cut the exact size or, or do anything like that it's actually easier just to, to cut yourself a square it's slightly less stressful and then we can get rid of the rest of the transfer sheet we can put it to one side and we can use it for something else another time so we've got our biscuit and we have got our strip to do our mug here so there we go so we've got lots of things going on there right okay so we've done that bit now, our cakes are all ready done because we did that the other day, ready to go. And in there we have got, it's done in white chocolate. Now we do have the world's most enormous bowl. 
to do the chocolate tempering because we couldn't find the other bowl. I think I might have taken it home. But anyway, so uh, this bowl is unusually big, so <laughs> just bear with us on this. And um, we're going to be doing white chocolate this time. So we are going to be using Calabao for those of you that have seen it before. There we go. So we're going to be using this one here, which is the buttons, and you will need to temper it. But it's really, really important you follow the instructions because if you don't, you're going to have a problem. So you must stick to the rules, which I will run through um, with you, and then you'll be able to see exactly what it is that you're going to do. You will need to act pretty quickly with this because obviously everything dries really quickly with chocolate, so you will need to keep going as fast as you can. That's when I have my students in, you see, in the classroom, I say, come on, come on, it's chocolate, and then I'm, I'm not... <laughs> I'm not going on about anything else, but there we go. I'm not trying to get you to speed up in class. I just need you to work quickly. I know it's the world's biggest bowl ever. It's the only one we can find. So, yeah, we really don't need this bigger bowl, but we've got it anyway. That's okay. We don't mind, do we, Kelly? Now I feel... If you, over, if you overdo it with the chocolate, we can get something. I know, I know. Gee, I feel slightly distorted with it being this big, but that's okay. We won't worry about that. It does fit in my microwave because I have tested it before we came on. So I said, right, we need to check it's actually going to fit in there. Otherwise, we're going to have to go home and get another one. <laughs> so it does fit. So that's all fine. So when we do chocolate tempering, we have a plastic, perhaps not as large as this, plastic bowl, plastic spatula. And we've got our callets or buttons. They are in the bottom there that are... Uh, Belgium chocolate. So this works for Belgium chocolate. It does not apply to Cadbury's. Please do not attempt to do this with Cadbury's chocolate because it doesn't work. Um, Cadbury's does not behave the same way as Belgium chocolate. If you follow the same pattern, it won't set. Um, or if it does set, it will set with a white bloom or fat that goes across the top of it. It will not look... Um, it won't look very nice so don't do it. you need to use belgium chocolate to do this so there we go that's that um i'm going to put it in the microwave do you know the only thing i can't think of we need a cake board for that which i have forgotten i think you've got your cake board you've got oh no it. i've got another one there that's fine no 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 not that one a different one right so managed to get my huge bowl into the microwave we're going to start with 30 seconds um that's what i want that fit that cake yeah just so it fits on there okay so we have got 30 seconds full power in the microwave to start with which gets the chocolate going and then we're going to start a 10 second stir 10 second stir until the chocolate is completely melted but not to the point that you've overheated it we're looking for it to have the consistency of double cream really important i know i go on about it every week but it's absolutely crucial with my big bowl <laughs> That. They were laughing Whatever at my bowl. Over, I, I'm making you overfill the bowl. <laughs> but in reality, I've just hidden the old bowl. I know, I've had a bit of a crisis with my bowl today. Now, I have made some other bits and pieces, which we're going to be using as well. I just need to run a bit of chocolate brown this snowman. So now we enter the 10 second stir, 10 second stir stage, of which, to be perfectly honest, there's not a lot to see. Um, it does take a bit of time for it actually to start melting. The cycle is approximately um, two and a half, three minutes. There's not a huge amount of chocolate in there, but there's enough that it's going to take the same amount of time. So every 10 seconds, you need to bring your bowl out. You need to stir it, which is huge in this case. <laughs> my huge bowl. <laughs> it's going to be laughing about my bowl for the next few weeks. Um, and then we just need to keep moving it. But very little happens for the first minute or so. It just looks exactly the same as what it did when you first put it in the microwave. And you think, what is she on about? Because absolutely nothing's happening in there. But believe you me, it is happening. You just need to wait. So just taking your time there. <laughs> Kelly, I can read your comments coming up as well. <laughs> right. So back in again, 10 seconds stir, 10 seconds stir. Oh, yeah, always the moment to say, don't forget to like and share. Um, for a chance to win one of Carol's 25 pound vouchers. Gosh, I nearly forgot what the time was there. Keep going, 10 seconds stir, 10 seconds stir. Just remember it. I know it seems like it's going on and on and on, but honestly, it'll be worth it. It will be worth it. It's not worth cutting any corners. So again, 
still nothing to report, nothing to show you particularly, it's just all 10 seconds stir, 10 seconds stir. So as soon as it starts to change, I will show you what it looks like, but it is really important that you stick to this. You do not need to buy a chocolate thermometer or a marble slab or anything like this. This is a really good method just to do this at home. So it's a home method, basically. Um, and you can just, you don't need all this equipment everywhere. First, when I first started tempering chocolate, I had so much equipment, you will believe. I had literally everything under the sun, didn't I? Mm. I had tempering machines that cost me a fortune, and I had marble slabs everywhere, and, and oh my goodness me, everything under the sun. Now, microwave, plastic bowl, spatula, and that's it. Do you know, now I'm starting to think, is it microwave even on? It, <laughs> it is working, but it's taking time. All of a sudden, it's because this bowl is very big, you see, it's putting me off a little bit. We need to bring that bowl back. We need to switch some bowls around, Kelly. Don't we? Mm. Oh, we've got someone else making Christmas trees. <laughs> Christmas trees. Yeah. Enjoying the Christmas tree mould. It's fun, isn't it? I painted the pink Christmas tree at the weekend with some lusters. Lusters, cl claret. Was it called claret? One of them. Claret, fairy dust, and something else. The fairy dust one and the claret one were so nice. They really were. So, if you're making anything with ruby chocolate, and you want to change it, I'll see if I can find it. Actually, what did I do with it? I'll put the tree somewhere. Um, uh, it's in a box. It's in a box somewhere. Don't worry. Um. It really changed it actually, it was quite dramatic, it looked really nice. It's over there, do you want me to get it? No, because you'll end up falling over those wires. We've got wires and cameras everywhere, it's just lethal. <laughs> so ruby chocolate, really lovely pink colour, but we actually painted it with a luster colour and it did look really, really nice with cocoa butter mixed in, of course. Um, right, so. It still looks like buttons, but it's starting to lose its shine. So it's now becoming uh, more matte in colour. So it's now starting to go through the process. So it's getting more and more close now. You made three trees and, <laughs> and got two eaten. I, I'm, oh, okay. I'm on the same wavelength as your daughter. <laughs> I can't leave anything lying around near you, can I, Kelly? No. The worst one for Kelly is the dark chocolate stars, oh. which we are using tonight. I know. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to watch Kelly with those. Mum fills up the whole thing and she only uses four, <laughs> which is just a, an opportunity for a snack. It's a small snack, isn't it, Kelly? We're getting there, it's coming. We will get there eventually. Just looking at the snowman, that's what to do. Right, okay. It's now starting to clump together. So the chocolate's now starting to stick together. So we know that there's the process is now moving along and we're getting ready to do something with this chocolate. So at this stage, I'll show you what it's doing. Where are we? I'm on a different camera tonight. So it's now just starting to clump together. You can see it's starting to lose its shape. There we go. My enormous bowl that takes up the entire screen. <laughs> POV. Hmm? POV, you're in the bowl. Pom. Point of view, you're in the bowl. I'm in the bowl. Okay. That's what you're showing everyone. That's what I'm showing everyone. I'm in the bowl. You ever need to, um, I know I do a lot of tempering on here, so I feel like I'm always tempering, but if you haven't seen this done before, or you want to refresh yourself on this, um, I do have a YouTube channel, and on there is a really short video, just keeping on the time, a really short video, about two, two and a half minutes, showing you how to do chocolate tempering. So if you're ever unsure, or you need a quick reminder before you do it, then have a look, um, go over there and have a look. Right, now the chocolate's lost its structure completely now, so it's now solid. So we need about two or three more blasts and we are there, we have got it done. So you're charging extra to clear up? Yeah, which is just me <laughs> eating it, isn't it? 
<laughs> it's not part of the payment. <laughs> right. Okay. Right, so we're at this stage now. So it's melted, Whoop. but we can't do anything with that. So we're another 10 seconds. As you get towards the end, the stirring becomes more important or as important as the heat. Just remember that. So it's always when you start to pull it out of the microwave, really, really mix it to make sure you are incorporating the heat. Sometimes you can have literally a few lumps left in this and then all of a sudden um, it's all done. Like this afternoon. Like this afternoon. When we I did tempered it. milk. You did. Kelly's been tempering. She's heard it enough times now. I made some transfer sheet chocolates. She's been making little buttons today out of my transfer sheet left over, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Right, fingers crossed, this is it. Okay, let's put it on the other camera so you can see where we are. Right, let me just move this out of the way for a second in my enormous bowl. So I think one more blast, to be honest, because it's not actually trailing yet. It's it's getting there, but it needs a little bit more. Okay, let's turn it back again. So one more blast. I'm always nervous about doing this live because <laughs> I want it to work. I don't want it to go wrong, do I, Kelly? okay this is looking fine right other camera so that's what we've got Do a square board for the cookie for the cookie yes please thank you very much you pre preempted that actually it does need 10 more seconds right one more Oh, let's press the button, there we go. Just push it along a tiny bit further, you just have to keep looking at it. That's probably enough. That's better. It's moving now. <laughs> right, okay. Just about. Let's do... Can I just move that out of the way, Kelly? Move the camera. So we're going to do the sheet first. So let me sit down. So we're going to grab the big transfer sheet. I'll move the biscuit out of the way for the moment. Pop that there. Bring the cake in there. Let's pull that down a little bit. Okay, like so. All right, you should be able to see it. I'm just gonna lift my camera back a tiny bit. I have to juggle things around a little bit but there we go right okay so let's get the chocolate onto the transfer sheet so all I'm going to do and make sure you've got it on the right the rough side okay and we'll start spreading it it's gonna lift there you go so let's get this moving now you, you don't want this too thick you want it thick enough, but not too thick. Come off onto your table, because you can always scrape it up again and reuse it, you see? I'll just pull my camera over a little bit so you can see it. A little bit more on the end. Now, this is drying really quickly, which is what we want. So what you're gonna do immediately is we're gonna find the end, which we've got, and we're gonna pick it up like so. I'm just gonna bring this in over the top. I'm going to take my transfer sheet and I'm going to put it over the back of my cake like so and I'm going to wrap it all the way round until it overlaps on the other side. Let's make sure it's stuck, which it has. Okay, I'm just going to run my finger around the top there. All right, I've done it. Perfect. Okay, so it's set very, very quickly. I'm just going to turn the other camera for a second just so you can see what that looks like on the side. So there you go, you can see that there. So that's the what I've done there. Can you see it's overlapped? 
and all I've done is wrap the whole thing so I've done lots of small wraps before so this is a big one okay now you can do this on buttercream you can do this on uh, ganache which is what I've done you can do this on sugar paste you can do it on marzipan what you can't do it on is a cake that doesn't have any coating on it initially so you do need to make sure there is an initial coating on also, this cake if the chocolate starts to set while you're working with it do you have to temper it again uh no you can just give it a quick 10 second blast because this is what's happening to me so i'm just going to put it back in the microwave for another 10 seconds so if you suddenly find it setting and you haven't finished what you're doing, um, then yeah, just quickly put it back in the microwave and that should bring it back up again. Should do. I mean, you never know. It is setting very quickly. It's quite cold at the moment, which means the chocolate is setting a lot quicker than it normally does anyway. So that doesn't help matters, does it, for us? Um, let's put it back in again. Now what we're going to do with this cake is we're going to put it in the fridge, okay? We're going to leave it in the fridge for about 15-20 minutes and whilst that's in there we're going to do some other bits and pieces so uh, we have got things to do. See, amazing how quickly it sets. So I'm stirring away here, you know I was only literally just put that sheet on and it had set already. So what we're going to do here is still still not moving particularly so I'll give it another blast chocolate always sets really really quickly but we're going to do the jumper quickly hopefully if it works we can get the chocolate to work it's marginally misbehaving but we'll go with that so I'm going to just take my biscuit let me just change screens now I'm just going to dip it into the chocolate like so she says that come out yeah yeah quite a thick ish coat on there and I'm just going to take my transfer sorry Kelly I'll just give that to you and I'm just going to press that down over my jumper cookie I'm going to make sure it's flat completely I've done it in white yet. I've done it in milk so I've never done a white one before so I'll see if it works live it's nothing like doing it live is there for a test Okay, so I'm just smoothing out the chocolate over this cookie and I'm just going to leave that to dry. Okay, then we'll bring that out of the fridge later. All right. Where can you get transfer sheets and can you reuse them once? Right. You see. So you're going to see later on that the transfer, I'm going to need that later. Let me just get all this, let me get all this in the fridge and then we can discuss that. So transfer sheets come from my website, which is traceyscakes.co.uk. Kelly will put that in the comments for yeah, you, I'm sure. That. Um, we sell them singularly or we sell them um, as an assorted pack so you can buy four or five together let's put the biscuit in there as well so there's a few options you don't just have to buy them um, don't just have to buy what you can buy one or two or you can buy lots it just depends on how inspired you are now if we were doing chocolate which we are doing and we've done the transfer sheet the other thing we're going to be using with this particular project is some of my molds now we would temper chocolate in exactly the same way I'm not going to do it again um, because I've already done it and there are reasons why I've already done it um, and I've put them into some of the other molds so we are using um, candy canes which is hold on I'll put it down now. Where's the candy cane mold gone? Oh, there it is. So candy canes looks like this. Let me change screens. You can have a look. So this is the candy cane mold. That's the one we're going to be using. Now, this one here doesn't have a lollipop stick in it. This one does. So we're going to be using the one that doesn't have the lollipop stick in it. So I've put this in and I've deliberately not put a lollipop stick in it. So we're going to paint that in a second. So I'll put that there. We're also going to be using, oh, yes, Kelly's favourite, the star one, which is the star mould here. And these are dark chocolate stars that I set earlier. Now, these, again, were done in the same way as what I've just done, but with dark chocolate. So what you would do is pipe them in and then bang them on the table and then they will go into the fridge and set. So I've got those as well. Let's put those two there. So I've got lots of little bits here tonight. And then also I have got 
I have got the snowman mould. Now, here he is. So this is a two-part mould, a front and a back. I've joined him together already. Now, I've actually made him solid because he's a little bit easier to join, although having said that, I've still managed to not quite join him on the side. And we're going to paint him shortly, so we're going to turn him into a bit more of a snowman. And we have also got presents we have got the present mold here as well so we're going to use all of these things that i've made um, to put onto this particular cake um, so this one here just makes little presents that's quite deep this one so if you were going to put in something inside you could actually sort of put your chocolate around the outside edge fill it with something um, i'm trying to think like ganache or some sort of praline or something like that then coat it across the top you can actually make chocolates with this mold it's quite nice and deep so this is called presents this mold and this the, all this selection here is what we're going to be use um, using to do this particular cake tonight so let me come back on screen can you temper 85 percent chocolate like supermarket own brand or does it have to be calabar I don't think it has to be Calabao. Um, having said that, I've never done it with another brand of chocolate, but I can't see any reason why not. Um, try, try it. The worst thing that can happen, it doesn't work, you'll have to eat it, won't you? <laughs> Would the chocolate work well for a hot chocolate bomb? Do you I think it's a bit big for a hot chocolate bomb? When it comes on screen, you'll see it's quite big, and I think actually if you put it in the cup, it would fill up the cup. <laughs> Being a bad thing. I mean, Kelly says it's not a bad thing, but I actually think it would be taller than the mug, wouldn't it? So it's quite tall, this thing. But anyway, <laughs> I'll show you. It's a good in idea. Hot in hot chocolate. Well, I think it might be too big. I'm just clearing up my table because otherwise um, it's going to be a mess. I can't have a mess. And the chocolate's like gearing itself to the table. So let me just get rid of that. And now what I'm going to do, once I've organised all of this, and while our... Um, let's put the chocolate in there. So all I'm doing is scraping the chocolate because it's all dried, so that's rather nice. Um, we're going to paint some of the chocolate, so I'm going to show you how to do that now while everything's drying. So we're making a Christmas mug. Well, that's the plan anyway. So um, can you colour chocolate first? Yep, yeah, you can turn it into whatever colour you want. If you've got some colour mill or some... Oh dusts or there's sugar flare has got a brand but it does say the words chocolate on it please do not use because i know it's incredibly tempting and every time i think about it i think oh i could just try it and it won't work so please do not use these to color chocolate they do not work these are water-based you need oil-based okay so don't use these okay band you need to be using oil-based colorings or dusts to color chocolate but yeah if you wanted to do this mug I don't know, mint green colour or pale blue or something like that. You could dye your white chocolate and then you could do it that. So you could do it that way. Right, I'm going to put this out of the way, my enormous bowl, because I'm going to need that later. And I am going to get a cloth to wipe the table down. So have we got any um, cloths over there, Kelly, please? No? Okay, let me grab this. Hold on. Let me get some more hot water. Would the daily transfer sheet that you sell come out as bright on white chocolate or is it best to do on milk or dark? It needs to be better on milk or dark. The daisy one does tend to get a bit lost on the white chocolate. I wouldn't do it on white, I'd do it on milk or um, dark. Milk or dark, whatever else the other one you just said would be fine. Right. So I've got to scrape this table because it's driving me crazy. Right. That's better with that right so we're going to look at painting the chocolate so we've made our white chocolate decorations and now we can paint them so we could just leave them white and no problem at all but we're going to paint them now if you're going to paint chocolate you need to be using cocoa butter so cocoa butter fixes itself to chocolate whereas um, if you use something like the gel colors the water-based things or things like um, vodka with, mixed with dusting colors it will paint, it'll be absolutely fine, but the minute you touch it, it will just slide straight off. So you go, oh, isn't that lovely? And you touch it, that will be it, it will be off. So the only product that actually fixes itself to the chocolate is cocoa butter, and that's what we're going to be using. So I'm going to show you my little setup because I do loads and loads of painting. So if you haven't come across me before already, I have an online cake painting school, and that is what I teach. So I'm always on here doing bits of chocolate, but actually my main job is painting and teaching people how to do cake painting. So that is uh, where you'll 
find all my stuff for um, to do with the cake painting but I'm going to show you a little bit now because lots of people are quite daunted by the prospect of doing any cake painting and it really isn't as stressful as it sounds it really is quite a lovely thing to do this is painting by numbers it literally is just painting a mold it is quite straightforward but let me show you what's involved because sometimes that can throw people a little bit so let's get this out how many paint brushes Kelly numbers one and zero please right let's have a little look what's going on so let's do cocoa butter painting next let's pull my chair in right okay thank you very much right so here we have so you've got a couple of ways of doing this now cocoa butter itself which is what's in the palette there they look like white chocolate buttons but that is actually um <laughs> do not eat those yeah, don't eat them <laughs> they're lovely to paint with um but underneath here we've got a chrome food warmer here and what we're going to do is we're going to light that tea light there and that's going to create some heat that's then going to make the metal paint palette hot and then once that's hot, it will start to melt the cocoa butter. Let's bring that back in. Now, if you don't have anything like this, you can get these off Amazon. If you go into Amazon and put in the words chrome food warmer, you will see it come up. Um, however, if you don't want to get one, I mean, they're not direly expensive, about £10. If you don't want one, you can just use a bowl of water with some a bowl of uh, boiling water uh, with a again a metal paint palette or a plate over the top it can be either and that will be just as good it just means that roughly every 20 minutes you're going to be having to um, basically just boil the kettle again so you've got some new fresh hot water so that's what that's all about so we're going to paint a couple of bits and pieces so we're going to start we don't need to paint the stars so we're going to move those out of the way not too near Kelly yeah they will, I'm looking those they will disappear and we are going to do the candy cane there we go so let's move that over a little bit so this is the candy cane now I need it to be straighter than this so I'm now looking for my knife it's my knife over there it's right in front of you thank you Kelly right so what I'm going to do with this candy cane which is slightly different to what I would normally do is I'm literally just going to take my knife this will all make sense later at the moment it does look a bit weird but I'm just going to take my knife and I'm just going to saw okay just a little bit off the candy cane so I have got a straight edge like that okay I wonder if anybody's worked out what it's going to be yet okay so I've just taken that and just cut a straight edge down there so I have just altered the design just slightly not hugely just a little bit um, in order for me to be able to paint it now I have got here red dusting color so let's start by putting that on and I have got black Andrea said when she painted on chocolate I'm guessing with cocoa butter it looked grainy what did she do wrong it was it with cocoa butter though i guess so probably too much powder right uh it could be the mix i don't know if you're doing it with cocoa butter and dusting color it should be okay um the lusters will sit flatter um yeah somebody's worked it out the lusters will sit flatter than the matte ones it might you can build up a few levels as well so that's something else you can do so don't just accept the first level you've got um you can always add in more okay so i'm just going to just clean my brush up even though i think it's got red in it i'm just going to make sure it's not pink or anything else so we just clean our brush up now my paint brushes are numbered this is paintbrush number one and paintbrush zero i possibly will need paintbrush two kelly as well at some point um, and we're going to paint some of this to start with so let's turn that around so you can adjust your paint brushes size according to the the size of what it is that you're trying to paint so if something is really tiny then use a smaller brush it is so obvious and simple but honestly you can get so carried away with a paintbrush in your hand that you actually forget what you're doing and then before you know it you um you're trying to put your brush into the smallest gap and your brush is too big so i'm just going to paint the red inside of this candy cane now if i want to make sure this is nice and dark red i need to add a bit more dust because at the moment it's a little bit insipid so all I would do then is just increase the amount of dust I'm mixing in with the cocoa butter. 
So let's keep mixing. So I'm going to go into this. Now this is very straightforward. There's nothing odd about this. It is um, nice and easy. You're just going to fill the gaps in. So if anybody's thinking, oh no, painting, I can't do that. It is really straightforward. As long as you've got the right products in the first place, um, you're going to be fine. You're going to be absolutely fine. So I've already done two versions, or I've done one version of this cake today. So you'll get to see two different ideas at the end. So um, to show you two different transfers. So the one I did earlier today, I did on a Father Christmas transfer sheet. This is the snowman version. So we're going to do the snowman tonight and see what that turns out like. So I don't really know what it's going to turn out like, but we're going to hope it's okay. Aren't we, Cal? Mm -hmm. So just keep turning it around. Don't try and put your brush in sort of this way. Get get your brush in where it needs to go. Okay. Where can you buy cocoa butter from? Cocoa butter is on Carol's Sugar and Crumbs and it's on my site as well. It's You won't be able to pick it up from the supermarket. It's one of those ones you need to go to a specialist cake place to get, okay? Like so. So you can see this comes together quite quickly. I'm painting relatively precisely, although I'm always under the clock a little bit to do this. There we go. Well, I'm under less o'clock this week, so I don't have to worry about the bake off because normally I'm working through that or working up to the last minute of that. So it's less of a panic tonight into there now the bow is coming up now what I did with the bow is I actually filled it in completely I'll show you what I mean I'm sure if you do this it will be more exact than what I'm doing it because I'm doing it under pressure <laughs> and it's always more tricky under pressure and it'll be fine so Now the other reason I didn't make these and then paint them live is because when you do this, if you decide to do anything like this, you've got to make your moulds and then you've got to bring them out the fridge and then you need them to warm back up to room temperature before you start painting them because if you try and do it when they've just come out the fridge they're going to be too cold and then you're going to find when your cocoa butter goes on here it's just going to set and it's going to be a real pain so you do need to do this in advance all right. So make sure you do that. Okay, let's turn that around. A bit of chocolate on there, let's get rid of that. There's chocolate everywhere. I haven't looked up, so if there are any questions, Kelly, are we all right still? Yeah, we're all good. Good, okay. So cocoa butter as well is a really, um, it's very, it goes an awful long way. So if you are thinking about having a go at painting, um, honestly, a little four, four pound fifty bag of cocoa butter will keep you painting for ages. It really goes a long, long way. It takes me ages to go through them and I'm painting literally every day. So um, it's really good value. Um, um, there's a question that says, um, so they have some cocoa butter colour. Mm -hmm. Half of the bag is unopened and they've gone paler, are they still okay to use? Yeah, that's it, just oxidising, that's absolutely fine. Yeah, if you've got a bag of cocoa butter and you find half of it's gone white, that will be fine. Just use it, no problem. On this mould, or any mould, yeah. um, could you fill in just the lines in white and then the red colour um, like into the mould and then pour the chocolate on top? You can't pour the chocolate on top like that, no. Um, I think that would be quite difficult. I think you can, you could have, if you particularly wanted to, dyed the chocolate red in the first place and then painted it white over the top if you wanted to do it that way. Um, and I know this is slightly more time consuming, but it, it does work just as well this way. So I always do it this way. How long do you, 
how long do you take it out of the fridge before you can paint them? It's got to come back to room temperature, so you'll be able to feel them. You'll be able to put your hand on them and feel. If they're still cold, then no, you need to wait. They need to be back up to room temperature, so I'm going to guess 15, 20 minutes maybe. So you've, you've tempered it, you've popped them in the fridge for 20 minutes, they're going to come out for 20 minutes, and then you can start painting. So 40 minute cycle roughly before you can paint them. Otherwise you say you won't, the, the cocoa butter just won't go on, it will be absolutely awful. So this is again, um, um, this is layer one. Normally with something like this I wouldn't keep over painting it, but I probably will just go back and just tidy it up a little bit. Somebody made a comment earlier about it, you know, it can, it can be grainy. Um, cocoa butter, um, when it dries, you can build up layers. So for example, if you don't get very good coverage on the first layer, you can wait for it to dry and then go back and do it again. And so you'll get a better finish, like this one here is a bit sort of um, clear. I can see the chocolate, so I can go back and I can just repaint over the top. Keep your brush flat as well, that will also help you. If you make any mistakes and you get any chocolate in the wrong place, if you've got a scriber, and you can always just scratch the chocolate off. So for example, I've got a little bit there, I just take my scriber and just scratch it off. So don't worry too much about the lines going too near the lines because you can correct it. So as long as you've got a scriber, you're going to be fine. Take that round like that. Okay, let's go on this one again. I'm not going to go over them all, but just the first few were a little bit on the thin side, so we should go over those again. Like so. So somebody's worked out, I think two of you worked out what I'm doing with this. So this is going to be the handle of my cup. All right, so this is what I'm going to use for the side of my cake. So I want it to look really good, hence why I'm now going back and painting it all again, because I want it to look lovely. We are going to repaint the bow anyway. We're going to just highlight that with some black, which we'll do in a second. I tried it with burgundy earlier, but you couldn't really see it. So it does need to be black if you want to outline it. Second layer always goes on much easier and covers much quick, uh, much quicker. So you'll find um, if you have to repaint, you will find it really much, much quicker. There we go. Right. So we're going to outline. And we're going to do that. I've got navy on here. Let's get rid of that. We're going to do this with black. Put some black on there as I did. Can you find that brush too, Kelly, for What's me? That? Oh, you found it, okay. Right, let's turn that round. Oh, that's hot. These get really hot, these um, paint palettes, so be careful when you move them around. Really hot. They're great for keeping, keeping the cocoa butter melted, but oh, they are really hot. Right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to paint the outline of this bow. So I'm just going to take my paintbrush. Now I've gone down a brush size here. So I've gone down to my zero brush, which is a nice thin brush. All I'm going to do is outline the bow. I'm not going to outline uh, anything else, just the bow. And you can play around with this. You know, you can do whatever you want. It doesn't have to be red. It can be anything you want. Change the bow colour outline it differently don't paint it at all it's entirely up to you it's your design i'm just giving you an idea for doing something completely different which is this christmas mug tonight so that's all i'm doing now sometimes when you do this like i've seen now i've not painted up high enough on one side so i'm going to get my red back out in a minute and just join that back up like that So it's not quite come up to the top there, so I get my other brush back out there and I'm just going to take my red and just take that up to the top of the of the bow. It's only when you put the line on it that you go, oh, I can see a problem now. So I'm just going to infill that like so. And on that side as well, just a little bit there. And then I'm going to take the brush again. I'm just going to outline here and then that side 
that. There we go. Like that. And again, you can fiddle around with this if you want to. Use your scriber if you want to tidy it up. Use a different colour. Put some spots on it. I mean, you can just do whatever you want with this bow. I've missed a bit, which I've just spotted. So we've missed the tie. So I'll just put this bit in here. So down here is the tie from the bow. It's hidden, I missed it. And we'll put that in. Like that. And again, I'm just going to paint the outside edge of it and it'll probably just join it up and I'll realise why I've not painted them. So we'll do that for now. So I'm just following lines that are already there. I'm not making anything up here. It is all there for you. And you can see it comes together quite quickly. It doesn't take that long. Yeah, look, I'm miles off here. Okay, and just, just going to scratch that back a little bit there. Just gone a bit too far. So again, don't forget to use your scriber. I'm going to change brushes to get into that bit there. So if you make a mistake, your scriber's going to get you out of it, okay? Now, um, obviously you can scrape off a certain amount of chocolate, but if you're finding that... Um, if you're finding that you're scraping off lots and lots of chocolate, it's probably not a good idea. So a certain amount, let's turn that round. get into the corner there there we go that's better and across that side as well so I chopped that bit off at the end didn't I like that there we go okay right I would say we're near enough done I'm just getting a tiny bit fussy with a few little bits that are like so there we go so we're going to leave that to dry for the moment so that's that part i'll put that actually where should we put that kelly we'll put that there now i'm going to just bring in a present and all i'm going to do is just paint the bow on top so these little present molds here as i said to you earlier these are lovely because you can actually fill them they're quite deep there's um three or four different size uh, two sizes rather on the mold so there's some longer ones as well i just went for the short ones tonight um and all i'm going to do what brush have I got here still? I'm on zero. Right, so let's go back to brush one. And what we'll do is just paint a little red bow on here. So I'll just pop that on there. And again, it's all there for you. So you just need to go straight over the top of it. You don't have to make anything up. Now, if you get a hole in the chocolate, can you see I've got a Apparently tiny... There's some trouble with sound. Is there? it sounds quiet okay if you get problems with the um if you get a little hole there you can always just put your paintbrush in there and that will get rid of it so you won't be able to see it then so sometimes you get like a little air bubble or something um then you'll be able to see it then can't hear you oh why has it suddenly gone quiet i don't know maybe it's because i've got my head down could be because my screen's up there you see i'm not saying huge amounts right let's keep going so then what i'm going to do here is just take this down here like that just paint the side let's turn it round could be because i'm talking i'm looking down you see like that and you can paint the side of the bow as well I'm holding it. I'm going to have to put it down because it's going to start melting otherwise. <laughs> I will... Everyone's saying that sounds, sounds okay. It's probably because I'm talking down. I'm normally quite loud. Everybody can hear me normally. <laughs> All right. Okay. Don't forget to like and share while you're watching. While we're watching me paint bows. Get Carol gives you an opportunity to win a voucher, so... If it's a free entry to a drawer, it can't be a bad thing, can it? But don't forget to like and share it to your friends. There we go. 
I'll just paint that round like that. And you can play with these. You don't have to do them. Um, if there's anything else, you know, you don't have to. You can put little uh, spots again on them or make them stripy or different colours. You can just do whatever you want. You can write names on them. You can paint the whole parcel. It's entirely up to you. I'm just going to do one as an example so that you can see how it's done. And that will then go on my cake as well. Um, so you can see it like that. Okay. Just a question about your face mask mould. Um, do you have a demo of you painting eyes? It's on YouTube. You need to go to my YouTube channel and there is actually one on there um, of me painting specifically the eyes on that particular. If it's the face mask mould, because I did the demo on sugar and crumbs and I was so nervous because <laughs> I had so much to paint, I did the eyes separately and I put it on YouTube. So go on to YouTube, which is Tracy Man Cakes, and on there, look for the video that says um, uh, painting eyes on the mask or something along those lines. You'll see it. There is a full video of the actual live that I did, um, but then there is also one other video that is of just the eyes and nothing else. Right, let's have a little look at my 3D snowman. So don't forget I made mine solid. So I made mine solid earlier this afternoon. I haven't joined it together brilliantly, I have to say, but it's okay, it'll do for today. So what I'm gonna do to start with is I'm gonna turn it into a white snowman. So I'm just going to turn this around. And I'm gonna take my brush number two, which is a bigger brush, and I'm gonna mix up some white paint. And I'm gonna stipple this over the snowman i'm not going to paint it i'm going to stipple it because it looks better if you stipple it than if you paint it flat um, it looks a bit more snowy it doesn't look uh, it looks terrible if you just paint it flat so um, just take your brush and i'm just going to go over my snowman like so it won't take very long it's pretty quick um, you want the paint relatively thick so that it covers really well i've got it sat in my uh, mould at the moment, just easier for me to do it that way than any other way. So now this mould here, you can sort of do it quite thin and then you could put sweets in the middle and then join it together because it stands up this snowman. Okay, let's turn the mould round. So yeah, he's a little bit too big to be a chocolate bomb, but he is quite sweet. He's holding a broom, so we've got to leave space for that. The other snowman mould that I have got, which is the snowman in the stocking, I'll show you that later, um, is back in stock, but we're now on countdown for the the, um, the amount we've got left. So once we've got we've sold out of him now, that will be it. He will have to come back next year. So there's a limited amount of those left if you want the snowman with the stocking. And I'll show you, I did a little video on here about, uh, ooh, about two Thursdays ago painting him and it went absolutely mad and we couldn't get him in stock fast enough. So we have now got him in stock finally and the last few are still available. What mix do you use to get a good consistency, like good texture? What for this? Yeah. You just need to practice. That's all I can say to that is that you will know um, when you're painting this what's working and what isn't working because if it's not covering then you've got you haven't got enough cocoa butter in it so you uh, sorry if, yeah if it's not covering you have enough dust in it if it's um, too thick it will just be completely uh, complete coverage so you will when you do when I do my painting classes I get people to um, by the time you've done trial and error with it you'll soon work out what works and what doesn't work you, you just have to have a go um, it's one of those things where I can guide you as much as I can but it's it's then a case of you sort of picking up the paintbrush and actually having a go um, you can't go wrong with this really because to be honest with you if it's not covering you just adjust it so it's very straightforward so we're turning him white now we could have made this chocolate white at the start but actually I think this gives a better texture than doing it um, rather than have let me turn him over he's got some chocolate on his bottom right I'm just going to turn him over and paint the other side while that's drying so I'm going to just paint the back so that won't take very long just going quickly over the side of him 
doesn't matter too much about the back, but we're going to do it while we're here, while the other side's drying. When you join these moulds together, what you need to do is get a heated surface. So you take the two out of the mould, you get a heated surface, something like um, a baking tray um, that's clean, obviously. Um, if you pop that over a little bit of hot water, let it heat up, and then you can put the two sides, um, two pieces down, smooth them around and then put them together. While I'm doing this, let me put the snowman, oh, hold on, where is he? Right, I'm gonna put the snowman next to me from the other week. I'm gonna pick him up. So that's the snowman that I demonstrated a few weeks ago. So what's the name of the snowman that you're doing now? This what's one the name is, of the mold? Right, this one is the snowman 3D mold. And this one is snowman in stocking and he's a lollipop mold, but he is so, so lovely. He has been incredibly popular. Um, so this is the 3D one, and there's only 10, I think, available. This one, we've got more back in now. I think we have about 20 available, this one now, because we say we did sell out. I just couldn't believe it. just went mad um, because it is so lovely. Is that Maureen asking about this? No, I accidentally broke the word omelette instead of this one. <laughs> I'm obviously thinking of Kelly's omelets. talking about omelettes. Just ignore her. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to move the toilet. If anyone to has any questions, yeah, okay. I She's will abandoning be, me for I a minute. Will be She'll be back. Absent. Okay. So while Kelly's gone, we'll just carry on with this. There we go. So again, you don't even have to go for complete coverage. You can go for sort of, you can still see an element of white chocolate and that's fine. There's no problem with that um, at all. So, I mean, I quite like to see a little bit of white chocolate on there. So I'm going to just turn him round, turn you back round again. Right, let's turn this round. Now he's tipping the wrong way. I'm going to have to have him this way round because he's upside down for me. Right, we're going to put you there. There we go. All right. So this is now dry, so you can see already if I touch dry it's a little bit wet there but it's generally dry. So we're going to just paint a bit of detail on him. So we'll start with his hat. So we're going to do his hat black I think, let's do that. So I can't remember what colour the one was in the transfer sheet actually. What was it? Has he got a red scarf? Yeah, let's do a red scarf. We can match then, can't he? So we'll do a red scarf. No, we'll do the hat first. Hold on, let's turn that round. Okay, so again, now black normally covers first time round, so you should be able to get reasonable coverage straight away. Again, you can customise your hat if you want to, you can put something else on it. You don't have to do it like I'm doing it. Did you answer if this is still in stock? No, I haven't looked up. Can oh, I? sorry. Um, it's a 3D snowman mould, still in stock. It is coming in tomorrow. Fingers crossed. The post is a little bit ropey at the moment. I'd just like to say that. We are having a few delays here and there with suppliers. So please, please, if you're waiting for something, just please bear with us. We had one supplier send us white boxes and no lids, which was very unhelpful. Um, so we're now waiting for those to come in. It's just a little bit frustrating at the moment. We've got another supplier that supplies us from America. And again, they sent the wrong moulds, which is totally unhelpful this time of year and from America as well. So just bear with us. We have got practically everything at the moment. There's just one or two bits. What size mould do you recommend for the snowman, the 3D snowman? What do you mean? Oh, what what mould? Uh, mould? Uh, box? I don't know, probably the small clear, I would think. Um, we'll measure him at the end and I'll let you know. All right, let's turn him over. I'm gonna turn you over so I can do your hat at the back. There we go. I think you might be too small for him, maybe. Yeah. Uh, too big, sorry. For the small, no, I didn't mean the mini crash locks, not those, I meant the mini Christmas tree ones. I think they'll fit there. I need to put some more black in here. You see now I'm starting to run out of dust. It's becoming um, quite translucent. So I just need to up my amount of 
dust to get it a bit thicker. There we go. Right, that's better. Okay. That's it. There we go. As his hat done, let's turn him back round again. There you go. Looking lovely. Now you could just paint underneath his hat as well. If you can hold your brush steady, just go under there. Am I still on camera? No, I've come off a little bit. Let me bring you back on. So just underneath his hat, just a little bit. Just be careful. You can see the chocolate. So we're just going to paint that like so. Now, while we've got black on the go, what we're going to do is eyes. So now he's got one there. I can't quite see what I'm doing. I'm trying to bring this forward a little bit. How much are the snowman, 3D snowman rolls? And I guess the other ones as well. They're all the same price, they're all 450. Every single mould is exactly the same, unless it's a two-part, but this one's actually a two-part together, so it's it's still 450. Can I use cocoa butter to paint onto cookies? Yep, that's fine. And now what are we doing with his nose? Let's have a look. But would you need to paint onto something or straight onto the cookie? You can paint straight onto the cookie, it's fine. Yeah. That's absolutely fine. Now he's got a pipe in his mouth, this snowman, so we'll do that in brown, I think. But what we'll do is we'll just put a little bit of a smile in there. And then we're just going to give him a little nose round about there. We're not going to give him a carrot. We're not going to get that advanced tonight. If you wanted to, you could. Like that. And then we'll just do his buttons. Now, again, I've got a little tiny air hole there. So if I just put my paint in there, that should fill it up. And you won't be able to see that anymore. There we go. And just paint his buttons on. It's coming to life now. Like so. And then we're going to just paint the lower half of his shovel. So what we'll do here, we did something similar with the other one because he is also holding a shovel of some description. So we did something similar there. So we'll give him a we'll give him a black handle on this one. Just because we've got black on the go. And a little bit up there as well. occasionally breathe right and then what we'll do oh kelly can you see if there's any brown over there please i already got it out oh did you oh yeah there it is sorry i bet you did thank you right and then we'll put the brown in there are you having fun <laughs> right let's turn this around turn it around now we're going to paint the lower half of the broom, it's actually got a line on it. So there is a line here where it changes to an actual brush. So this bit here we're going to do in the full brown. So we won't water that bit down or lighten it up. I should always say water it down. It's not, it's lighten it up. So like that. Paint that bit like that. Hold on. Got a bit of dust on there then. Right, then we're going to turn this back like so. We're going to then mix a little bit of white in with the brown and lighten it up a little bit. So we're going to take this and we're just going to see it's a different shade now. And that's the other part of the brush. Like so, I'm just going to go across the top as well. Like that. There we go. It's down the side as well. Don't forget, because he's standing, you can see all sides of this. So just make sure you, if you are, actually I missed a bit down this side. If you are painting it, just make sure you've got it all covered on all sides. 
There we go. Right, let's do his scarf, which we've decided. Everyone's we're gonna... learning a lot. They're learning a lot, are you? Oh, good. <laughs> oh, good. Maureen's also added the snowman. Has she? <laughs> oh, that's fine. No problem. I'll sort that out for you. Right, let's turn this back round. Okay. I hope you're enjoying it anyway, because um, it's lovely to come on here and do lots of tutorials. There are some amazing lives on here, so we're all very lucky to have um, access to Sugar and Crumb, so we can see all these demos. Okay, so we're going to just paint the little scarf now. Let's turn him round. So again, just follow it up because it's all there. Now I just changed my mind because the snowman on the transfer has got red on him. I know, but I've done a blue board, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter. If to you colour white chocolate, does it still work on transfer sheets? Yep. Absolutely. We did it um, a few weeks ago. We did, um, it had a heart on it, didn't it? Have we still, there you go. Have we still got that one? Um, <coughs> Hold on. I've, no, there's that one behind you up there. Yeah, the the one. green one, yeah. So we did do it. I'll show you what it looks like. Hold on. We're now rummaging around. Here we go. Thank you. So this is, uh, whoops, that fell off. This is green chocolate. Now I'm chucking it everywhere. I was coming under here. This is green chocolate. So this was done with white chocolate with um, colour mill, a green colour mill. So that's something you can use, no problem there. Um, and that's what it does. So this was white chocolate and it changed and went to this colour. And then we made this little topper. Let me come down here, this little topper as well. Um, that went on top again that's just another little mold and we painted that as well so yes you can change the color um what was i doing i've forgotten oh yeah i was painting the scarf wasn't i so let's go around here let's mind his little hand so yeah you can color it can color chocolate on the transfer sheets the only thing that doesn't work is candy melts please don't use candy melts on transfer sheets because they don't work all right, so avoid those. They're lovely colours, but they don't work. And the thing is, if you've spent money on a transfer sheet, the last thing you want is then um, it not to be working. So that's no fun for anybody, is it? So I'm just going to go round. Just going to turn it round now. See how we're doing. So just do his scarf. Right, we've nearly done him. So if you were doing this project, you could do all of this in advance. You don't need to do this at the same time you're doing the cake like I'm doing. So you can go ahead and do it all beforehand. So don't feel any pressure to kind of do it. Then I'm going to flip you over for a second, pop you there. There we go. Just go around the back of him. Am I still on camera? Yeah, I didn't even look up actually. There we are. We're okay. So only when I stand him up that I'm going to start seeing, oh, I missed that bit. Don't forget the pipe. Haven't forgotten the pipe, but I'm going to do that when I switch back to brown in a second. Okay, let's just check him all the way around. I'm not going to bother to do anything else with the back of him because you can't really see it. So there we go. Let's turn him over. Right, Mr Snowman, let's sort you out. So let's sort your pipe out. We need, what have we got here? We need the zero brush for this because it's very small. You can see it on the snowman. So again, you haven't got to make it up. It's all there. Just clean my brush out because it's got red in it. All right, let's grab a bit of dark brown and we'll just grab a neat dark brown. There we go. And we'll just pop his pipe in there. Might extend his mouth as well. Let's see what it looks like. Mm -hmm. It's quite funny actually. Do you use a different brush when you change colour? No, I just clean it in the cocoa butter. I'm only changing my brush if I need to go down a size. So if I'm struggling to paint something, it will be because it's just too 
big for the area that I'm trying to paint. So that's the only time I ever change brush. All right. So if I want to change colour, I just dip it in the cocoa butter and I just wipe it on a piece of kitchen roll until the colour runs dry and then that's it. So um, literally like this, just pop it in and just clean your brush and then you can just change over to another colour. Right, let's put a little bit of white in his eye because actually that is really important because it then makes it stand out. So we're just going to put a little bit of white there and there. It makes him look a little bit more alive. And then we're also just going to do one little trick, which we did with the other snowman. Actually, I'm going to move you out of the way for a second and turn this around. So if you take a scriber and if you go like this, up the chocolate, and you scratch it, you'll end up with a bit more realistic um, looking broom. OK, so you just sort of end up, you're going to get loads of chocolate come out, but it will end up looking a bit more realistic. It's just a little... A little trick. There we go. Then you kind of left the colour back in then again. It just make, means the brush doesn't look as flat. Oh, there we go. There we go. How's that? So I'm just going to go up. Like that and just scratch it. So then you end up with the... Um, brush looking a bit more realistic right okay one more tiny bit because I can just see that it's not painted and then we're going to get the cake out of the fridge and we'll start bringing that together I'm just going to it's typical now because I could sit from a different angle I'm now seeing a couple of bits I've missed so what I might do is just keep the cocoa butter going in case I see anything else when I stand it up and then I can just pick my brush up and quickly repaint anything I see okay so we're going to leave him on there to dry it's really good to actually when you do your painting is leave your snowman in the mold do not hold it do not try and paint it standing up it's much easier to actually just leave it in the mold and then you're not holding it because when you start holding it you have heat in your hands and anytime you start touching anything you are going to start melting it and causing yourself loads of problems so just leave it exactly where it is in the mold and then that's fine right so we don't need to put this into the fridge to dry we can literally just leave it um, and that will then set off so there he is you can see him isn't he he's fun isn't he all white chocolate so there we go right okay jump into action so we've done our candy cane and we have got our snowman right Ooh. did I press the screen yes I did Okay, so we're now going to get the, I'm um, just thinking where I'm going to put this, we're now going to get the cake out of the fridge. So the cake went into the fridge about, well, about half an hour ago actually, but that's fine, it didn't matter, no problem. Um, well, I was going to leave that, Kelly, but oh, okay. that's okay, you've blown out my candle. No, it's still going, I, <laughs> I, I was unsuccessful. Just remember we have to do that before we leave, because you know what will happen. Um, you're doing it now, that's okay. Fine. No, that's fine, just leave it, because I, we might need it. Right, let's get the cake out of the fridge and the, and the jumper. I nearly forgot the jumper. Okay, so let me put this. Uh, which camera do we want? Let's go for the other one. Let's go for the side one so you can see what's happening. Let's put that on there. There we go. Right, let's move that out of the way. Right, okay, so this is it round here. So we're going to start with the transfer at the back. Now what we need to do is find the end. It's here somewhere. Oh no, there it is. Okay, so we're going to start pulling this. Like so, until we get to the back. Now it's overlapped here. So what we're going to do is very carefully pull it towards me Ooh, a little bit gone there okay and then you will get straightish line that goes down the side it's not 100% straight but it's not too bad down there so then that's it done so that's all now chocolate with the pattern on it so you don't need to worry about anything like that can I cover the cake in sugar paste and then use the chocolate collar yes there you go that's the answer to that one that was quick <laughs> 
Right, let's have a look at the snowman uh, jumper. So I'm just going to pull that back like that. Now you won't be able to actually see the shape of the jumper very well, but if you turn it over, you'll be able to see that there, and then you can trim it back, which I'm going to do on a board. Let me just get a board. So I'll just pop that onto that with a knife. Hold on. Let's just get a brush. Done. Let's move things around. Right, so all we're going to do here is we're going to very carefully just chip on the back. So if you look at it on the back, hopefully this will work. So it always works in practice. Oh, it is working. That's good. Okay. So this just chips off because it's quite light chocolate. Okay, it's only a very thin coating. Okay, oh, I've chucked a bit off there. And you can also do it like this along the bottom then. I'm going to show you some of my more beautiful ones earlier. Okay, and you can turn it over. Just chip out some of the loose bits in the corners so you can get it looking more like a jumper. Be careful because it's a sharp knife. Don't want you to hurt yourself. But you can end up then with a jumper. Let me find you another one that I did earlier. So we've done a few of these now. We have got this one here. So that one is a gingerbread man jumper. And we have got snowman jumper. So these are done with transfer sheets. There you go, like so. And again, all you do is just spread your chocolate over the top keep it nice and thin and then just peel it all back and then you can dress it with little bits of um i use chocolate cocoa form which i'm actually going to get out in a minute just to finish off my cake but that's basically what you can do with something along those lines okay so that is that right now let's go back to our cake and get that sorted right let's move things over Right, I've got about five screens on. I've got my screens in the wrong order today, so I'm lost which screen I'm meant to be pressing. Right, let's bring this up onto here. So that's our cake board. Now we're going to pop this on, because don't forget this is now done. So we can pop that on like so. I'm going to come back on screen for a minute because we need to temper the chocolate again so that we can actually attach the handle, which somebody worked out earlier. So we're just going to set this off. Now, this is what we did earlier. So the chocolate that was left from earlier, you can remelt it. So if you have any chocolate left over or you've made a mistake and it doesn't work, then you can retemper it. It will tolerate you redoing it about two or three times before it gets fed up. So if you do make a mistake with chocolate, it doesn't come out of the mould, you've not tempered it for any reason, then have another go, okay? But we're going to do the first melt a little bit shorter just to make sure that it's not going to become... You... Oh, sorry. Sorry. Um, Can you score the jumpers on the transfer sheets and then put the chocolate on the wall? So Can you score the jumpers? Like, if you... And then put, put the chocolate down on the transfer sheet and then put the cutter and score it that way and then stick it on top of the biscuit. Try it. The only thing I can say with that is that sometimes, even though cookies are, they don't rise that much, sometimes the tops can be rounded, so it might not stick completely flat, if that makes sense. We've done quite a few. It. Yeah, try it. Try it and let us know. We're, we're doing quite a few experiments with these jumpers at the minute to kind of see how to get these transfer sheets on. We've been fairly successful so far with getting the patterns onto the jumpers. Um, I've also done it with uh, transfer sheets 
and a hair dryer as well but I did blow up with my hair dryer but that's another story um it's a very old hair dryer <laughs> so, my hair dryer no it wasn't your hair dryer it was mine it was my one that exploded but that's not because I was doing this method it's because it literally just didn't work so <laughs> don't worry <laughs> so this will not take the massive process that we went through before because already um, the chocolate is near enough there. So when we did the first round of tempering, it took quite a long time, didn't it? This will actually go really quickly. Um, and that's because it's already been through the process once. So if you have to redo it again, you will find that you can go through the process quite quickly. And we only need a little bit. That's all we need, which we've literally got. And actually, we don't even need it that runny. We just need it so we can stick. So we don't need to get too complicated about this. We can just have it as it is. And I've just realised I put the handle on the wrong way round or the wrong side. All right, let me just turn it. There we go, because the handle's going to be there, isn't it? That way. Right, let's go to the side. So the chocolate's still quite thick, so I wouldn't use it like this for transfer sheets, but it's, it's ideal for sticking. So I'm going to be... Let's put the lock on this screen. That's it, I'll stop it going in and out. So what I'm gonna do is just take my handle. Now I'm going to put some chocolate down the side of it. I'm actually gonna pick up a piece of kitchen roll because while I'm holding this in place, I don't want to actually melt it. So I'm going to just hold my handle on like so. So I've got it in position, I'm going to hold it whilst it sets I'll turn my hand around a little bit so you can see what's going on so if I just hold it hopefully it will set all being well it normally does <laughs> no pressure but it should set okay just there you go you don't need to hold it for that long if it's tempered although if it suddenly falls off I'll just laugh so that's my cup coming on you can see where we're going with this now all right so we're just not going to swing it around too much at the moment, but you can see what is happening. So that's where we're going. Right. Now what we're going to do with our snowman, we're going to stand him up. We're going to stand you up, Mr. Snowman, next to the cup. So I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, chocolate on the bottom of him. And we're just going to stand him up here. So you'll be able to see how big he is now. There we go. Let's make sure we've got that right. So he looks like that. There we go. See, look, it's starting to come together now. And, oh, we had a present somewhere, didn't we? Let's, let's put that down next to him as well. He's got his, got his present with him. And he goes out. And we'll just pop that down there. You can always sort of tip it a little bit at an angle. There we go, like so. And I'll give that to you, Kelly. Thank you. We might need it again, so don't wash it up or anything. And then what we're going to do is do the top. So we've got that bit there. Now we're going to just move a few things out of the way. And we're going to put a rim on this. So we're going to roll out some chocolate cocoa form, which is basically, um, now where is it? Here it is. This is chocolate paste. Um, it is really, let me go to the other screen. There we go. Right, we're going to use this. Um, which is called Cocoa Form. It's milk chocolate. There's a milk white and a dark one. They are actually um, rock hard. So when you first get it, don't be put off that it is a really um, solid product. Um, if you either hold it in your hand, you'll find that it will actually start to melt. So this one, um, you can either do it this way or you can put it in the microwave. So if you have got, um, if you want to pop it in the microwave, but honestly, you won't need to put it in the microwave for long. We are literally talking um, a few minutes. So nothing too drastic, not minutes. What am I on about? Literally a few seconds. seconds. You put it in for minutes, it will be liquid. So <laughs> I'm just going to pop mine in for literally about two, two or three seconds. It's really, really quick. That's it, just to bring it back to life. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make the tea bit that goes into the into the cup at the top. Hot chocolate. Onto our hot chocolate. This is the hot chocolate bit, isn't it? <laughs> By using more chocolate. So if you don't have access to something like this, you could just use buttercream, or you we are going to use buttercream in a minute anyway, or you could use um 
what's the other thing we could use? Um, chocolate buttercream, so you curls, 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 chocolate curls, something like that. But you'll see what we're doing in a second. Um, is there a small cake board anywhere? Yeah, there it is. So I've got a little four inch round cake board. It is modeling chocolate, yeah. You can also make it, it's still quite cold. I'm just going to give it another couple of seconds in the microwave because it's just cold in here at the moment. Okay. I'm trying to work cautiously with this because otherwise it goes too far very quickly. So I'm having to give it quite a big knead, as you can see. But we're getting there. We're getting there, Kel. We've, uh, <laughs> I'm glad the Bake Off's not on because we're 15 minutes into it now. <laughs> you don't mind, do you? So we're going to do two things with this. First thing, I might have done enough, actually. I think we probably have. Right, so the first thing we're going to do is roll out a circle. So we're just going to take this. And we're going to roll it out. We should have done a bit more actually, but anyway, we'll do some more in a minute. It doesn't need to be that thick. Yeah, we are going to need a bit more. No, I'm going to put a bit more in. Right, just give it a couple of seconds in the microwave. Keep an eye on it. cold in here, it's very cold in here. Right. Okay. Right, that's better. We've got a bit more now. I think we underestimated that a little bit. Okay, so we'll give it a need to get my muscles out now. Right, so we need this for two things. So we're going to put a rim on the top of the cup and we're going to put some hot chocolate in the middle. There we go, now it's going and now you can feel it moving, perfect. So don't be alarmed if you buy it and it, go, it looks like this and it goes to this, okay? There we go. Right, okay. So let's roll this out. There we go. It's like leather. I think that's probably the easiest way to describe this. Isn't it, Kel? Yeah. Literally like leather. I'm trying to move this board out of the way. There we go. just need enough to do the center of our drink now what I found with this is a five inches too big four inches too small so if we just cut out a four what do I do with my knife I have another one. Oh no I've got it here it's fine okay so we're just going to cut this out like so whoops Now, it doesn't actually matter that it's not that level, but we'll level it up a little bit. There we go. There we go, like that. So we'll just take that off. So that's the centre bit, but it's actually too small. So all we need to do is not even, they're just going to take this rolling pin and just stretch it a little bit. Okay, just so it fits so we're not going to go too mad with it just literally like that yeah it looks like that leather but it doesn't taste like leather does it Nikki <laughs> it'd be pretty awful if it tastes like leather won't it right let's get back to our cup so all we're going to do here um, buttercream is we're just going to put a little bit of buttercream into the top of our cake so actually I'll put you on the other camera so you can see this a bit better so we'll go over here 
and I'm just going to put some buttercream in here. I'm not going to go wild with this. I'm literally just going to put enough in just to stick it down. Like that. And then take this and place that in the top. Again, sort of push it out to the outside edge anyway. You're going to pipe over some of this so it won't actually matter that it's not particularly flat or anything so don't worry about that there we go you can see it there all right let's bring this back up onto here right we're on that screen where are we yes we are so now we're going to do the top so let's see if this buttercream is okay it's not set no it's okay so i've got a she says chucking it across the room so we've got a 1m nozzle which is this one here let me show you what that looks like which camera are we on now this one okay so that's a 1m nozzle there um, what we're going to do we're going to take some very nice uh, marshmallow flavored toasted marshmallow, toasted marshmallow buttercream i guess sugar and crumb special for our particular cake and i've whitened it so i used some whiten earlier don't you dare claim this was your idea, madam. I had artistic <laughs> license within this. She had artistic license, but this is my idea. You can't take all the ideas. It was a 50-50 <laughs> effort. <laughs> I, think the I just said, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, that's not 50-50, Kelly. We're here for support. Right, now we're going to take this and we're going to pop that into the icing bag. And then what we're going to do, we're going to create the whirly bit that goes on top of the the drink i think i'm probably going to leave it on this camera i think because i'm trying to work out the best angle to see it uh, yeah, yeah you can still see one. okay so what we're going to do wow. is we're going to go that looks very satisfying it is we're going to go all the way around we're not going to cover it and then we're going to start to come back up again doesn't matter if you have to stop and you can take it up as high as you want to take it that's entirely up to you is that enough do you think that looks all right. There we go. Right, decorations, obviously. Can you pass me those stars, Kelly, please? No problem. Right, dark chocolate stars, yummy. yummy. So we're going to put some stars in there. Like so, look at that. There we go, put a few of them in and we've got some marshmallows so we're going to pop those in as well little mini ones do we like this idea is it going down well yeah it's cute okay <laughs> what a face plant <laughs> who said that <laughs> right okay curls you insisted on curls, Kelly, didn't I did you? did insist on curls. Right, so chocolate curls. We'll put some of those on as well. You like this idea? Oh, actually, I haven't done the side bit yet. This would be lovely for two people. I'm thinking one person. <laughs> you one see, drink per person. Now, that's what I'm saying to you about this cake. It's not very big. It's a little four-inch cake. I did a few extra decorations on the side. There you go. Look, you can put a few curls on the top there. Like that. So these just PME chocolate curls. And get very carried away with this the only other thing i did um if you got into a problem with the top edge so if you then pull this apart and you find the top edge i'm just going to tip the camera up a tiny little bit so you can see it there we go um if you if this set broke for any reason i'm just going to show you a quick trick you can do to get around this So you can use some cocoa form here. I'm just going to roll it into a sausage. You can see this going on in the background. So there you go. As long as the handle doesn't fall off <laughs> all of a sudden. And then they'll be like, oh, oh no, I wasn't going to do it with that. I was going to do it with the blue paste. What am I doing? Where's the blue paste gone? There it is. To coordinate, you see, I'm trying to coordinate. I'm going to roll out in the chocolate mess. It'll be all right. So if you wanted to bring the blue into the cake itself, you could just roll out 
You can still see me doing it, can't you? So I'm not going to change the screen. So I'm going to roll a strip out. Like so. Let's turn it around that way. You're going to make Christmas mugs now. I can see this coming. Right, I've got one of these. I don't know if you've ever seen any of one of these before. Where are we on this screen here? No, you're not. You're on. Yeah, I'm on the side screen. So this is a multi-wheel cutter. You can adjust it so you can get different thicknesses. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut a strip. I'll start at one end and just run this across like so to the end okay and then let me take a seat let's grab this water i'm going to just take this and flip it over i've got to be careful because this is sugar paste not modeling paste and if you just get a bit of water and just run it straight down the back you have to be careful with this because otherwise it, it can break let's start with a straight edge is it always best to cut the cakes using a hot knife to save cracking? Cut what? The cake, because the cake's wrapped in a chocolate colour. No, you can do. Right, and then you can just add... I'm trying to do this so it doesn't break. So if your collar isn't straight or breaks or does anything funny, just add a piece of sugar paste or some modelling paste or something going round your cake actually then what it does it sort of pulls in with the board there you go just push it up a little bit like so you just get very carried away doing this you see there we go and what else do we need we also need straw i do but what did i do with it there it is so we have got a straw so we're going to put this in. I'm going to hold it up for you in a minute so you can see it. So the straw is going in. And then we're just going to put some black ribbon around the base of the board. So I'm just going to do this with a little bit of glue. Because I can't find the prick stick, so I'm having to use the PVA glue, but that's all right. We can do that. So I'm going to just put a little bit of black ribbon black ribbon is so good because it picks up all the color anything you've done black it makes anything on the cake really stand out so i do like to use quite a lot of black ribbon so just pop that around the bottom and then when i've done this i'm going to show you this cake and then i'm going to show you the version i did earlier this afternoon where's the um scissors i've got right Just get the glue out so I can finish it. Just attach that on like so. And there we are. So let me just tip my camera up a little bit so you can see it. There we go, up a little bit. Why don't you hold it up? Well, I'm going to get rid of all this mess in the background and then it won't look quite so chaotic. Um, and I will hold it up so you can see it in a minute. But there you go. You can get a really good idea of what this is. So cute. Yeah, it's so cute. Mm. If I pick it up, I hope the handle's not going to fall off, but that, that's the plan anyway. So I will pick it up for you now so you can have a little look. Right, the moment of truth. Da, 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 da. There we go. How about that? That's not bad, is it? For <laughs> a couple of hours work. Right, there we go. Let's make sure I've got this turned around so you can see it. There we go. So that's my Christmas mug. I have got another one to show you in a second. So we'll do this one first. So this one is the snowman version. So what I've done here, this is a paper straw that I put in at the top. 
um, the cake you saw me wrap with a transfer sheet. This is the candy cane mould. Now, if you didn't want to do a candy cane handle, what you can do is the cocoa form that I was using earlier. Um, you can make a handle, leave it to dry and then attach that. So if you wanted to do that slightly differently, you can or you can do... Um, um, what's the other thing I was going to say in terms of the moulds? Um, so we dot the candle. Uh, yes, you can do it like that. Or you can do it with modelling paste. That's the other thing I was going to say. So modelling paste is something else you can use. Um, something like Saracino, which um, dries really quickly. You can make a handle shape, leave it to dry and then just pop it on. It doesn't have to be chocolate. OK, you can also add other decorations. So we could put my little snowman in there as well if we want to. Look, we could pop him in. Should we put him in, Hill? Yeah, I'm going to put him in as well. Look. So you can go no, the pink one. Why don't you put the blue one in there? You want me to put the blue one in there? I've got a blue one. Hold on then. I'll change it over just for you. And we'll pop the blue one in. <laughs> okay. How about that? Is that better? Are you happy with that? Yeah. All right. So there you go. So you can go full snowman with this if you want to. Add an extra snowman as well. So that's the snowman version. I'm going to show you the Father Christmas version in just a second. So you can have a look at this one as well. I'm going to put these pictures on my Instagram. So if you wish to see it, again, I will put them on Instagram um, so you can have another look. So let me par let me get the other one out for you. We'll do a swap. Thank oh, you, Kelly. Right. This is the red version that I did earlier today. So this is the Father Christmas version. So I'm going to hold that up closely to the camera so you can see this one here. Unfortunately, I didn't have a red straw, which is a bit annoying. Um, again, candy cane here. Mr. Santa Claus is the um, transfer sheet that I've used on white chocolate. Um, this here is Father Christmas with a parcel. Is a mould called Santa Scene mould, which is again on my website. Um, which has also got a tree and a platform with it um, but that is something else that you can do there so that's the red version of it I just tip it forward like that I've done exactly the same on top um, but I've done it on a red board this sugar paste whatever color you pick is really important so because you can see it gives you two completely different effects and I started to get into theming mine so we've also got reindeers and we've got um, snowflakes. snowflakes so you can go classy you don't have to go tacky like me you see I always like to do tacky things um, although I don't think this is too tacky actually for me well put, together. well put together reindeer so you can do a reindeer one what was the other ones we've got two lots of reindeers what's the other one we've got hats and canes hats and canes so that would also work with well so all the transfer sheets i'm just going to put my website up on the bottom is traceyscakes.co.uk do you want to bring um look you can have your little biscuit and you're going to put a biscuit Sorry. on there right you're going to bring this one you can you've got oh. your coat on what are you on <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but kelly's going to come on screen now and we're going to bring both of them on here so you can see both at the same time you be careful don't you drop it i was trusting <laughs> <one>. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure right we'll hold them up together so you can see them so there you go that is um how to make a chocolate christmas mug so i hope you've had a lovely evening hold it still Sorry. it's freaking me out so no, i've got it i've got it well i haven't taken a picture of it yet you see so i've got to actually do it that so there we go you can see the differences together as well and the different colors you tip them forward a little bit cow look carefully <laughs> um <laughs> Um, then you'll be able to um, have a go and make yourself a nice Christmas cup. There you go. All right. So if you need any more information, do please go to my website, which is traceyscakes.co.uk. Please visit um, Sugar and Crumbs as well for all their amazing buttercreams for the Whirly uh, 1M nozzle, all of those sorts of things as well. If you want any chocolate moulds, please go to my site and have a look over there. I will be back at half past 11 on Thursday morning, which is when I'm normally in. Thank you, Kelly. You're so welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I hope it's given you lots of ideas for, the, um, for doing your Christmas cakes over the last few weeks. I'm sure that... Um, uh, yeah we're certainly coming up with some different things for you so thank you very much for joining me I'm delighted I haven't had to tear through um, the bake-off or get to the bake-off it's given me an extra half an hour to do this because I knew there was no way we were going to get this done um, before the bake-off so we've been keeping this one in the bag ready to go so thank you ever so much for joining don't forget to like and share and spread the word amongst your family and friends about all the amazing videos that are on the sugar and crumbs page um, it's a delight for me to be here on Tuesday evenings I do enjoy it don't we Kelly yeah yeah <laughs> highlight of the week <laughs> <laughs> highlight of kelly's week <laughs> yeah you cheeky devil right okay thanks so much see you on thursday at half past 11 take care everyone thanks for joining us bye